Now let's talk about mutual goods for a moment. What we have is a situation in which we want to have six seats at the Super Bowl. Now, the utility function for each player in this game, and there are six people, is utility minus price equals N for the number of friends they go with. In other words, if they go by themselves, the utility is one. If they go with another friend, it's two, and then the other one gets two. If they go with a third friend, they each get three, and all the way to six. Now back to our Super Bowl, uh, let's take a look at some friends who might be enjoying the Super Bowl. Okay, so you might have noticed that our six friends here are uh, having fun dressing up as uh, the greatest of all time, goats, uh, in the form of Tom Brady uniforms, number 12, back when he was a Patriot uh, and uh, before he moved down to Tampa. Now, these guys are obviously having a good time. They went out, bought those masks, they got the uniforms, they bought Super Bowl tickets, and although we can't see their faces, you can bet that they're having a good time being together. So, as much fun if they went alone? No, more fun than if they went alone. So, so what we have then is uh, a situation in which each player gets one, two, three, four, five, or six utils, depending on how many friends they go with. So the total utility then is one N to six N or somewhere between uh, one and 36. Actually, it probably should be between six and 36 if they were all individual people at the Super Bowl. Although they're gonna get some benefit from just being in the crowd. The fact that they're with other people consuming it with them. But this would be particularly useful if they were together or if they were having a party at one of their homes for the six of them. But there are problems and sometimes a mutual good can be a crowd good. Here we have the same six friends at the Super Bowl and um, their utility function is very similar to what it was before. Utility minus price equals N. But now we have something to account for disruptors. So we had a minus the probability of a disruptor times the number of friends. So D equals disruptor, some drunken idiot who's annoying. Um, so let's see if we can imagine who that might be. So maybe it's this guy, you know, and he's standing right in front of you, or maybe you'd like to sit for a minute and his armpit is dripping all over your head. But the point is, you're going to be there for three or four hours. Not going to be much fun if this guy happens to be seated next to you or right in front of your group and you're not having as much as fun as you'd like to. Okay, so then what we say is, well, let's suppose that the probability of that happening is only 10% and uh, that the disruption cost is a cost of 10. Well, then that would be a minus 0.1 times 10 or 0.1 times a minus 10 would equal minus 1. So then the total utility would be 1n to 6n, somewhere between 1 and 36, and the cost would be a minus 1 to 6. So probably still worth going to the game, even if the guy is a jerk. But now let's suppose that we change that a little bit, and we say, well, there's a 50-50 chance we're going to get some jerk like this who's going to be right in front of us, and the cost is going to be 20. So that's a 0.5 times 20 equals a minus 10. Now you have to multiply that times n, so it's gonna be great. One to 36 in terms of value to the group, but the cost is gonna be somewhere between 10 and 60. Chances are you're not gonna to wanna to go to the Super Bowl next year or maybe ever again. And so whether it's a group of friends and crowd having a great time jointly consuming the Super Bowl, the conducible benefits of the Super Bowl come through. And even if there is some cost of some person being a jerk, maybe you're still gonna to continue to go. So we've looked at this now from the standpoint of uh, joint consumption, and we have considered the six different possibilities, rivalrous, non-rivalrous, and conducible, and whether they're excludable or non-excludable. What we've learned is that the non-excludable portions tend to be failures, and we get low benefits from them. But if we can convert them into excludable models, then we increase the, uh, the payoffs. This is an important aspect of society and rule of law, is how do we convert non-excludable assets or products into excludable products 
increasing the utility for all of those that are involved. This question will be on the final exam, and I will expect you to be able to explain it, maybe not as thoroughly as I did, but you should be able to label the chart, draw the chart, uh, label it, and describe the aspects of each of the six products, rivalrous, non-rivalrous, conducible, excludable, non-excludable. Surprisingly, I always have a lot of students who can't seem to be able to do that. So I want you to be able to do that because this is a very valuable thing for you to use. And so that will be uh, the beginnings of today's lesson. Now, what I'd like to do is give you an assignment. So I will post up an assignment tomorrow that'll be due early next week uh, on this subject and see what you can do in terms of coming up with some models and how to solve these. Good luck. Thank you.